Good morning. Glad to be joined from Tulsa by the vice chair of the Oklahoma Legislative Black Caucus, Representative Monroe Nichols. Good to have you, Representative. Glad to be on. It's Black History Month, but today we're going to talk about present and future. As we talk about Black History Month, and we see lots of stories and we look back in the past, let's talk about what you think we need to be talking about right now and what you're concerned about in the future. Yeah, I mean, and thank you for that question. I think this is a it's a it's a great question because this is a, a living history, um, and you know we have seen some some really interesting and neat things that have happened more recently uh, with uh, a new appointment to Oak Triple C there in Oklahoma County, um, and we're starting to see black voices I think play more of a role in <clears throat> in our discourse, which is which is an exciting thing as well. But what we know is like for instance in my community here in Tulsa. We have these equity indicators that look at, you know, how fair of a city do we have? And I think we uh, scored a, like a 40 out of 100. So like we know we have a lot of things to do uh, to really close that gap and we can and we should. Uh, and I think if we can if we can really work in those areas, we not only honor the past, uh, which is, a, is very much a shared history. It's Black History Month, but it's a very much a shared history with everybody in this country, particularly in the state. Um, but I think we honor that past uh, by really taking on this work of, of equity and equality moving forward. You know, I really believe at the end of the day that uh, a rising tide like kind of lifts all boats and, and, and we really have to take, we really have to take this opportunity in this moment where we have all these federal resources, those types of things to make investments where we haven't made them before, because we know that black folks, particularly in Oklahoma, have always been national leaders, have always set uh, an amazing standard, and we just have to make sure that we are, uh, you know, putting things in place to allow that to continue to happen in ways that we, frankly, uh, just have refused to do so in the past. One of the areas that's pretty well known in Oklahoma is we have really, really terrible health outcomes. There was uh, being on the Oklahoma City County Board of Health for many years. I know one of those areas is inequity for African Americans and minorities. They're even farther below the, the norms that are not really well done in Oklahoma. Anyway, your thoughts about health inequities? Absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the thing when I was early in my career, there's a study done here in Tulsa, and it was essentially between North Tulsa. Um, large uh, uh, black population in Midtown Tulsa, um, mostly white, there was a 14 year life expectancy difference between uh, communities that were about four or five miles from each other. So just a just an amazing number really when you think about it. Uh, one of the issues has been access to fresh fruit foods and grocery stores. I know uh, Northeast Oklahoma City is, has struggled with this as well. North Tulsa struggled with it as well starting to make progress there, but everything from that to access to physicians, especially uh, health clinics. So not just a family physician, but a cardiologist, for example, um, not having access to those things has always been a problem. Uh, in Tulsa, we've made some progress uh, with the Wayman Tisdale Specialty Clinic uh, in partnership with OU. Um, uh, but but that's where we, those are the things that we have to continue to focus on because we know for a long time, we did not, and it cost people their lives. Whether we're, you know, whether you're talking black, white, or not, we lived in this state uh, with a reality that uh, I think we would all say is is, is something that um, we're not okay with, right? Um, but it but it has been that, right? It's been the divesting in communities of color that has really uh, negatively impacted everything from wealth to health uh, to education. And, you know, that's so interesting given the fact, and as most people really learned about um, in, in probably a more expressed way last year, uh, the history of Black Wall Street, the Greenwood District here in Tulsa. Um, we, as black folks, have never been folks who have uh, just been waiting on a handout. We are a proud people, particularly in the state, who built something from the ground up only to have it taken away. Uh, so this is not about just kind of, you know, invest in these communities as we say we have to. It's really about unleashing the talent and the prowess that has always been a very proud uh, and very capable part of our community, which has been black Oklahomans. The vice chair of the Oklahoma Legislative Black Caucus is Representative Monroe Nichols. Thanks for sharing your thoughts today, Representative Nichols. Absolutely. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.